when we would go uh, to reach out for people winning souls for salvation, uh, when we were in the car, he would just, you know, uh, touch you uh, in an appropriate manner. He would touch your breast. Sometimes he would, uh, you know, make it seem like he's tickling you and then he would uh, touch your breast. That's when it started. Hi, my name is Miriam Bila. I am 22 years old. I am a model and I work. I also do, uh, I'm in school doing part-time at UNISA. Uh, I am the first child at my house followed by two siblings. And yeah, this is how my story started. So growing up, I grew up with my grandmother. I didn't grow up with my mother. Uh, so in my neighborhood, I used to have uh, this other friend of mine that I would go to every uh, every time after 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 school, so I would uh, go to the house and play with her. So I remember this other time they bought her a bike. So every day after school, I made sure that I would you know go to her house and play with her and ride the bike and all of that. So the the friend had um, a brother that was older than her. So this other day when I went to play with her, the brother sent the sister to go play outside. And then the brother called me to come inside. At that time I was in grade one. Uh, I was six years old at the time. Um, so when the brother called me, uh, well, I didn't know uh, why he was calling me. I just went inside. Um, when I got inside, uh, he told me to t take off my clothes. Well, at that time, I just did it because I didn't know what was going on since I was young. I took off my clothes and it happened. That was the first day uh, or the first time I got raped uh, by the brother of my friend. Uh, it didn't happen once. It happened... The memories that I have, it's that it happened four times. Yeah, that's that's what I remember. And it seemed as if uh, the, the little sister knew what was happening. Because I remember there was a time when people came in our school and they were teaching us about sex, about pro protecting ourselves, and they also taught us about periods and all of that, uh, going into menstruation cycle. Uh, so when we came back from school, because I would, we used to go to the same school. So when we came back to the school, she mentioned something. She was like to me, um, I know that you already had sex because you slept with my brother. So it was a shock to me knowing that uh, she knows what had happened. And that broke me a lot. Uh, you know, and I started isolating myself. I wasn't at school. I would... I wasn't, you know, I didn't have friends. I would isolate myself. And I remember there was a time, a time where I couldn't hold my pee. So I would just, you know, um, it would just happen, you know. Um, I remember even there was a time where like I, I peed on myself uh, at school. And then my teacher called me and then she was asking me question that what is happening. But I didn't, you know, because I was young at that time, I think I couldn't, you know, explain what had happened. Uh, until when my grandmother passed on while I was doing grade four, we had to, I had to move uh, to go stay with my mother. And then when it was, you know, having to stay with my mother and my stepdad, it was because I didn't, you know, growing up with my grandmother, I didn't have a fa uh, fem uh, male figure in the house. It was just, uh, you know, girls, women, uh, my, my aunts, my grandmother. So there was no male figure. So having to go and stay with my mother and my stepdad, it was, you know, it took a lot from me, you know, having to adapt to stay with a man because, you know, every time I would, you know, question that, what is it going to happen? What's going to happen? Uh, I remember there was the, uh, even this other time where my stepdad was playing with me and my younger sister. And then she, he accidentally touched my bums. And I just screamed at him. I'm like, don't touch my bums. You shouldn't do that. And he was mad at that time. He, he started asking me questions that what's going on? Are you dating? Why are you talking like that? You know, and 
I just I just broke down at that moment. Um, so I didn't really, you know, give him a chance or had a relationship with him. I remember I used to hate him so much. I couldn't stand his presence. Um, and it prolonged, you know, even when I was in high school, the guys at school, I didn't get along with them. Um, so when I was in grade 10, uh, I started dating girls. I would do it in secret. I, I think somehow I knew that, you know, it was wrong, you know, dating girls and, you know, uh, because I grew up in a Christian family. So I, I started dating girls. I would sleep with girls uh, privately so people didn't know the other side of me. They just thought that uh, I'm not dating uh, anyone. Um, and then when I was in grade 10, that's when I found out that the person that I was living, so when, while I was growing up, I didn't know that the person I stay with is my stepfather. So when I was in grade 10, that's when I found out that the person that I'm staying with is my stepfather. So that also disturbed me. I'm like, so it means that this man are like this because my, I don't even know my political father. He left me. Um, I don't even know why he left me. I got raped. My stepdad, he's not, you know, so perfect. Uh, you know, so I thought, you know what, this other gender, it's, it's just not for me. So I started dating girls. I think uh, when I started, I started dating a guy when I was doing my grade 11. That's when I started you know, really dating a guy and it didn't work out. I remember my relationship with my relationships with guys wouldn't last. It would take like three months, two months, sometimes weeks, you know, because I couldn't, I couldn't tolerate them. I, I lost interest quickly. And then, um, I got a church when, while I was doing my high school, uh, grade 11, I got, um, this, this other people came to our school, they were doing outreach and then they, I, they reached out to us and then I decided that I'm gonna join their church. Well, I started fellowshipping with them and then when I was in matric, that's when I started opening up about my, um, my past, the trauma that had happened about the rape thing. So I started opening up because we had uh, people that were leading us. So I will, uh, that's when I started speaking about it, you know. And you know, when I was in matric, that's when it, it affected me the most because uh, before I wouldn't speak about it. I wouldn't tell anyone about it. And you know, people would talk. I remember this other day we were just having a conversation with um, other girls. And as we were speaking, this other girl just mentioned that, you know, I don't see rape as a big deal. If it was done to me, I would just, you know, enjoy myself. And that would affect me a lot because I'm like, that person doesn't know what really happens there. Uh, but anyways, uh, I joined the church and I started fellowshipping with them. Um, I started speaking about, you know, what had happened to me. I started testifying to other girls. Um, and I remember there was this other time when we had revival at church. Uh, then the pastor, this other pastor was preaching at church. Uh, and then she, he started uh, prophesying that there are people in the house that um, have, have been through the most, that are people that... Um, were raped, were abused uh, sexually, physically, and all of that. And I, don't, I didn't want to go to the front. Uh, and I remember screaming at the back, you know, I, was, I just cried. Uh, and then someone came and grabbed me and then the pastor prayed for me. I felt so free. I felt uh, so much relieved. I felt like, you know, something or, um, you know, something that was heavy, you know, just fell off me. At that time, because I, I was going, I was attending church with my mother. I remember telling my mother that, you know what, this is the church that I want to fellowship to uh, because, you know, I find so much peace there. But my mother didn't understand. I remember we even, you know, fought because she didn't want me to go to the church. But I told her that that's where I, find, I found my peace. And, you know, uh, when time went by, she finally accepted that,
you know what it's fine you can go to the church i i, I remember she even visited uh, the church that i went to so um when um after my metric there was this internship at church uh, that um, i was told to do well it was also a decision that i took you know because yeah i loved ministry a lot so um we had uh, to do this um internship for a year a church so it means that you have to stay at church be at church the whole time the whole week you know serving at church and all of that and then that's when things happened with um the pastor so how it started is when we would go uh, to reach out for people winning souls for salvation uh, when we were in the car he would just you know uh touch you uh, in an appropriate manner he would touch your breast sometimes he would uh, you know make it seem like he's tickling you and then he would uh, touch your breast that's when it started I remember you know I, I didn't in my mind I'm like maybe I'm just being insecure because of what had happened in my past so um, I, I thought I was being insecure so I thought maybe I'm the problem. I remember even, you know, praying about it, telling myself that, you know what, I'm not gonna, you know, let this get to me because it's just me. It's because of what had happened in my past. And the pastor knew what had happened. I remember there was a time where, you know, he would tell me that, you know what, men are not the same. I am your father, you know. If there's ever anything that you need, you can always come to me. So, yeah, it, it, it started like that. I thought, in my mind, I thought this man was being, you know, the father in my life, the father that I did not get to have. You know, he would um, take us to, well, there were other girls in the internship, so he would uh, take us to McDonald's, you know, buy us food, make it seem like, you know what, we are the favorite girls. He used to call us... Uh, uh, his girls, you know, so he would take us out every time. I remember sometimes with the um, when the, with the internship when we were, you know, having classes and all of that. He would just come. Sometimes he would just take me alone to the house. He was like, "Today I'm taking you home," and then we would stop by somewhere, and you know, he would, you know, talk to me, you know, uh, encourage me and all of that. And in my mind, like. It, it, it didn't make sense that, you know, this person can, you know, abuse me or uh, do something wrong to me. And then what happened is that there was this other, one of the girls from the internship uh, came to us, me and my friend. And then she told us that the pastor is touching her in, in you know, in a manner that she doesn't like. And then, you know, we, we told her that, you know what, no, it can't be that pastor. It can't be him. He can't, you know, you are just overthinking. He cannot, it's not, maybe, you know, you are just overthinking. It's not, it can't be that. It can't be what you are thinking. And then I remember telling the pastor that I want to be a model. Uh, I want to pursue modeling and all of that. And then he was like, he's going to help me in the you know in becoming the model and all of that and then um he told me that we need to do a photo shoot because in the modeling industry they they need you know professional pictures and all of that so i agreed you know i was excited that you know this man is gonna help me um in this journey so this other time when the time for for the photo shoot came he took me uh to this other place and then you know the place it was um it was it was strange because there wasn't anyone at the, um in that place uh it was a beautiful place yes but it was it was quiet there wasn't you, you know people went there so what happened is that uh, we went, we took the first pictures, it was, it was good. And then there came a time where I had to change because he told me to bring uh, clothes so that it doesn't look like we did the photo shoot the same day. Um, so I 
when I went to the car to take my clothes, uh, he told me that I should just come with my bag. And then in my mind, I'm like, if I come with my bag, where am I gonna change? And then, well, I did as he said, and then I went to the car and then took my bag. And then when I was, you know, when he was taking me pictures, he would tell me that uh, I should, uh, you know, take out my other arm down, you know, put it down. And then it came to a place where he was like, uh, you can change to your, outer, to your other outfit. And then in my mind, I was thinking that, okay, should I change in front of you and all of that? He was like, no, you can feel comfortable. You need to remember that you're a model. So you would be doing this, you know, as part of your job. And I was, as I was taking my clothes off, he would, you know, comment on my body. He told me that, you know what, you have a beautiful body. And he would ask questions that, why didn't you shave? You're a model, you, you, you didn't even shave, you know. Um, so, uh, and then he told me, we took, I changed into the other outfit and then he took me pictures and then he was like, then now you need to take off your, your, your shirt so that we can just uh, take you a half naked picture. I didn't feel comfortable at that time, but at the same time I was scared that what if maybe I What's gonna happen if I maybe I try to fight that person? Is he maybe gonna do something and all of that? So I just decided that I'm gonna do as he says. Then I started taking pictures. He would just, you know, make nasty comments about my body, you know, telling me how sexy I am and all of that. And I remember there was a time uh, during the photo shoot, he came close by uh, and he picked me up. He started kissing me on the neck and that was uncomfortable. And you know, at that time, I didn't know what to do. But at the same time, I think I didn't want to fight him because I was like, what's gonna happen if I fight him? Is he gonna maybe, you know, do something worse? So let me just see how these things go. I mean, he just picked me up. He would kiss me on the neck and yeah. So, and then after that, uh, he told me to dress up and then I dressed up and then uh, when we were in the car, he, he was like to me, um, he, when we were in the car, he told me that, you know what, I am so proud of you that, you know, even after the rape, you felt so comfortable, you know, with doing the shoot. And then he told me, he was like, you're not supposed to tell anyone about this. You, you can't tell anyone because it's not everyone that's gonna understand what happened here. And then he took me home. That's when I started, you know, when I, when I got home, I broke down because I saw that, you know, at his intention, his intentions towards me are not as genuine as I thought. Um, and that I remember crying, but at that moment, I didn't even know what to do. Uh, I would go to church still, but then I knew that, you know what, my heart was no longer right, you know, I wouldn't, even listening to him, you know, it took, it took so much from me until when I spoke to my friend and then my friend told, uh, told me that the same thing had happened. You know, he told me that, um, he told, uh, she told, I mean, she told me that uh, the pastor would, you know, kiss her as well. Um, and then the photo shoot also happened with her. So my leader saw that uh, there was a different, like I was changing. I wasn't, you know, as committed as I was. I remember even, you know, when we had prayers, you know, I would just cry out of nowhere. You know, at church, I wasn't the same anymore. And then my leader came to me and then asked me what was going on. And then I was like to her, you know, I can't tell you because I don't think you will believe me. And then when I told my leader, she believed me. She was like, I believe you because the same thing has been happening to me. So the same thing has been happening to her uh, with the pastor until it got to a place where it was reported to the senior pastor. The senior pastor called us uh, to come have a meeting with him. 
and then we explained everything we had it was a group of girls and i remember there was a girl who was uh, 16 years old at that time 16 or 17 years old at that time and we would share what had happened so with each one of us it was a different story and this pastor would make sure it was with every one of us he knew that we struggled with something in our past he knew because with me it was the rape thing and the absent of my father with the other girls it was the absent of the father and the other girls rape as well so he would use that to get to us uh, telling us that you know what it's gonna be okay i'm here for you and all of that the senior pastor said to us that he wants proof. Uh, we sent the proof and the, uh, my proof was the pictures and how he would, you know, speak to me over WhatsApp. So I had to screen, screen grab that and send it to uh, the senior pastors. And then the pastor was dismissed at church. But then, you know, after, after that church wasn't, wasn't the same anymore. You know, having to go to church and then I remember this other time I went to church and then this other lady came to me. She hugged me. She was like, I know what happened. I, I heard what happened. You know, she started hugging me. She and, you know, she wanted details that what really happened, you know, so it, church wasn't the same anymore. And people spoke. I remember. Um, Someone was like, you know what, we need to protect our husbands because, you know, this it's, it's, it's not safe with us, you know. And sometimes you would feel even the atmosphere that, you know, people, it's like people are scared that we're going to do something to their husbands or like it wasn't it wasn't uncomfortable. The questions we would get, uh, the text we would get. It wasn't, it wasn't uncomfortable going to church. Uh, there wasn't that peace anymore. Um, we were supposed to open a case, but then I couldn't open on my side. I couldn't open a case because knowing that I fought with my parents to come to this church, you know, I was like, um, this is where I find peace, you know, and the most hateful thing was, you know, you know, a thing of um you know i was like the same pastor that prayed for me the same pastor that told me that everything's gonna be fine the same pastor that told me that men are not the same the same pastor that you know encouraged me told me that everything's gonna be well it's the same pastor who did you know the very same thing you know so it was disappointing for me my relationship with god it wasn't the same because i would blame god i was like why would you bring me to this place if you knew this was going to happen i questioned god you know my prayer life was never the same again um to anyone who has been through the same thing that i've been through i just want to say it is okay you know it's not your fault because most of the time we questions our we question ourselves uh we question that you know is it is it me uh is it is something wrong with me especially when it happens you know uh with different people it's like you you start questioning yourself that is there something wrong with me is there something wrong that i did but there is absolutely nothing that you are doing wrong and sometimes you know with me i had to you know search that why why did it happen to me because we get told that you know something happens for a reason but sometimes it's not it's not because of you. God just used you, you know, for someone else's story. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's not about you, but it's about, you know, God using you for that particular person's story. Hi, my name is Miriam Bila and I've been through the most.